It was the $35 billion, billionaire dollar renewables project to build a gigantic solar farm in the Northern Territory and link it up with Singapore to provide them with energy. Sound far-fetched? Well, it was. This week, the project, led by billionaires Twiggy Forrest and Mike Cannon-Brooks, fell through and, despite some wishful thinking from the NT government, is unlikely to go ahead. Joining me now to pick apart this incredible boondoggle and just what happened here is energy economist Alan Moran. Alan, thank you so much for talking us through this complicated project, but was this Sun Cable project ever going to work or was it always just an ego project from a pair of billionaires? Well, I think in retrospect, you'd have to say the latter, it was an ego pro project, but a lot of people took it quite seriously for a while, even though it, if it was to be successful, it would have broken a great many records on diff very many different levels. You know, the $35 billion that you've mentioned, well, they'd already burned the way through $260 million uh, without any, any concrete evidence that they were getting anywhere with it. Uh, and that, that's when they pulled the plug. Uh, in retrospect, you'd say, well, you know, this is a 5,000 kilometer cable, mostly underwater, seven or eight times as long as any cable in the world so far. It was uh, it was going to have a grid grid solar of about twice what the present grid solar is. It was going to have batteries ten times as many as we've got at the present time, uh, and it was to get it was going to get all this power through this immense infrastructure, thirty-five billion dollars of infrastructure, which means you've got to spend about three or four billion dollars every year to to maintain it. Uh, basically, it was going to get there, and it was going to take fifteen percent of Singapore's electricity market. Well, you know, it does seem ridiculous. These these two people, uh, Andrew Forrest and Mike Cannon Brooks, have both have both made a lot of money and been innovators uh, uh, in different different theaters from energy, and they both decided that they were going to get into energy. Uh, they're both of them pretty pretty woke people. Uh, the they've drank the Kool Aid on, in terms of renewables. They see this is the new Nirvana, um, and uh, basically they 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 were going so far until. One of them, in fact, it was um, it was it was Forrest has pulled the plug, uh, possibly because he's been advised to do so. But he'd been previously uh, spending, you know, he, he spent, he's been spending a lot of money in terms of renewables and hydrogen, etc. Uh, and uh, it's difficult to see where any of that is going in terms of um, in terms in terms of Mike Cannon Brooks. Well, we all know he he basically had a go and has some success in taking over AGL, but. Basically, AGL is a company which in, is, is being consolidated to what it has become, and it's it's now worth about a third of what it was worth three or four years ago, uh, and doesn't seem to be going anywhere into the future. So they're both uh, embarked on this energy journey, this seeing seeing that renewables are the new nirvana, and it's it, they've come a cropper. Uh I think. Uh, you know, you mentioned what uh, the, the Australian government hasn't put much money itself into it. It has actually spent some money on something called 5B, which is going to be the, the technology involved. That might that isn't part of, uh, of Sun Cable, but it's still uh, the Australian government did put on our behalf $14 million into that. It may be successful, I don't know. Um, but the thing about it is, and you mentioned uh, the, the government itself has shown regrets. In fact, Chris Bowen has said he's, he's very, he remains very upbeat and excited about Sun Cable's future, which he's described as being, you know, the, an integral part of the renewable energy superpower that Australia would be. And I think that this is a little bit disturbing that he's he's uh, boosting it so much because uh, some people may even remember that the ALP in the past and with a different different energy minister, a man called Rex Connor, had this <laughs> great view. And he, he was going to be building, uh, spending about the same as this, $35 billion in today's money, in, uh, in a massive new project which was to take over the mining and energy sectors of Australia and, and to catapult us into some new world. And, of course, it came a real cropper in the end, and it's just as well because he would have taken over the energy sector of Australia, which has been... Uh, responsible really for a great deal of our present living standards, and uh, it would have been it would have been gone right into the doldrums. So uh, there there is a there is a precedent for this, and whether uh, whether whether uh, or not Chris Bowen is keen to replicate uh, the, uh, the, the 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 buffoonery of, uh, of Rex mm. Connor and uh, and and uh, do, and undertake all this investment, I don't know, but. 
It's certainly it's sounding as though he would like to do so, and that would be a disaster for the country. Indeed. And, Alan, I want to move on to Chris Bowen and the safeguard mechanism reforms which he has announced this week or the beginning of the week, targeting bigot meters here and abroad with a specific hit in regional areas. I mean, is this just basically Labour taking a second crack at a carbon tax, but this time, you know, in a slightly sneaky way, still on steroids? How does this actually going to work? And what about their promise that people in regional areas would not be affected by the move to net zero? Well, they clearly will be. I mean, we all will be affected. If, if And we are being affected. We've already seen it. Energy prices, which are double what they were as a result of that move, has, has moved towards net zero. It'll get even worse as we, as we if we do progress towards that. Uh, essentially, if we go to net zero, we, we're certainly looking at some of the data and how you would do it, you'd have to do it through batteries to ensure you get the, the, uh, the, the ups and downs of energy ironed out. And we'd be talking about something like two or three times Australia's GDP just in, in batteries alone. So this, this is not going to work or it's not going to work with any decent standard of living. And the, the latest thing he's put on is, is you know, akin to a 75 dollar a ton carbon tax which the, the 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 previous carbon tax which was introduced by labor in in 2012 uh, and was was repealed by abbott uh, was 23 dollars so this is a massive increase and it comes on top of other imposts we have already through renewable energy requirements and through various taxes and and uh, uh, and, and uh, loans etc given to renewable energy at the expense of coal and to some degree gas and these are the very, very policies that have driven up the price of energy so far. And certainly Bowen seems he's going to be doubling down on all this. He's got a tremendous uh, belief that uh, renewable energy will come good. But, uh, and he's taken his health, health of leather down that, that mm. path. And it's really going to be very painful well, be before we come to understand that it is not the future. We, we cannot survive on high levels of renewable energy. Uh, in any economy in the world. Alan Moran, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much for your insights and explaining some pretty complicated stuff uh, in ways that even someone like I can understand. So, Alan, thank you so much for that.